right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, oh my, 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 what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to know that our God is the ultimate God. That our God is that ultimate God. Well, we're so grateful and thankful to be here with you today with our story time. And we know the story time is a little different. We know that our stories are 15 minutes or less now. And then we take 15 minutes or less and pull out some of the principles and doctrines that's within the story to help us enhance our walk with Christ Jesus to see it in, in working form. All right, so today our story is entitled Because It Came Don't Mean It Got Me. Because It Came Don't Mean It Got Me. This story revolves around a young lady. Now this young lady is, is struggling. She, she's having a hard and pretty tough time with life as, as she faces life on a day-to-day -day basis. She's having a, 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 a tremendous hard time in the new stage for which God has brought her to. You see, she done, she done went through high school. She done graduated high school. She had some problems in high school because she didn't have much. She didn't have a lot. She wouldn't want to those beautiful girls. She wasn't one of those popular ladies. She wasn't one of those that was putting out for the boys. So they were always saying stuff about her, always calling her names, always talking about she don't like men, don't like boys. She, she like girls. She always had something negative to say about the young lady. She wasn't one of the young ladies that helped them cheat or, or whatever on their test uh, and all of that stuff. So they, they had this thing about she was stuck up and she thought she she was better than everybody else and all they always had something to say even when she was going to church with her mother because some of the people in the church wouldn't representing who they say they was they figured that she was a tattletale they they, they called all kind of stuff about her because she she was standing on what she believed in so she had a pretty tough time so when she came into college and it was a community college she she working down at the local grocery store and, and she going to school and carrying on. Oh, some of the kids really uh, uh, was really cute. Now, some of those were some of those, even the ones that had come and grew up with her. Now, she continued to press on and, and she continued to struggle on and, 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 and fight on. She, could, she continued to do the thing, but there became a clique. Uh, a group of young ladies and men that, that, that has set out to, to, to make this girl's life just miserable. Now her name was Gwen and every time you looked up this was said about Gwen, this was done about Gwen, this was uh, 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 set up to make Gwen fall and falter and all this type of stuff. But old Gwen kept on pressing on. She kept on pressing on. Now she had a, a, a young lady at the church, well really not a young lady, a mother of the church that she would go to and confide in and, and care on and she would talk to the mother of the church and the mother of the church would always tell her this one little statement, because it came, don't mean that it got you. Because it came, it don't mean that it got you. Now she was she used to listen to mother say this all the time. Now things done really got pretty tough at the school, you know. She owned her her last year and, and things done got kind of tough because the kids really done mounted up an attack against her and carried on to and it got so bad that they, they done started this thing and, and, and about her cheating and, 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 and about her helping others cheat and all of this here and she was dating one of the professors and one of the female professors and it's got really so, so bad that even all of the other professors had got, got tricked to be on board with this to really scrutinize this young lady's work, to really scrutinize what she say, what she do in all of this here. And she would go to the grocery store and go to work. She had another friend at the grocery store that she went to work with that, that uh, uh, was... Uh, a kind of very uh, in tune young lady with the word of God and, and she was around her age and she would tell her this here, listen because it hit you 
don't mean that it got to stick to you. Because it hit you doesn't mean it got to stick to you. Now, the, out of all this time that she's been talking to this young lady and the mother of the church, she did, she really didn't understand what they were saying. She could hear them, but she didn't really understand it. So when things got so, so bad, I mean so, so bad, that she, mother told them, say, listen, because it came, don't mean that it got you. She said, Mother, I don't mean no disrespect to you, Mother, but I don't know what that means, and you've been telling me that for years. Mother just smiled. She said, I want you to do this. She told her. She said, I want you to go home and read Psalm 64, verses 1 to 5. And so she just smiled and went on about her business. And uh, uh, the next couple of days, things have really got up mounted. As a matter of fact, one of the professors had graded her paper so hard that it downgraded from an A to a C plus. This is how hard he graded her. And she was telling her friend at, at, at the job about it. And, and her friend at the job told her, listen, because it hit you, it don't got to stick to you. Because it hit you, it don't got to stick to you. Now, she looked at this guy. She said, listen, I, don't, I heard you tell me this, but yet I don't know what that means. And lo and behold, guess what this young lady told her? Go and read Psalms 64, 1 through 5. A couple of days went by and she was at home and she had got up that morning and said her prayers, got herself ready and had some extra time and, and it dawned on her what the what the, the mother of the church told and her friend told her. So she read it and read it a couple of times and she got on up, left on out, got on, on the bus and went on to the schoolhouse. And she was pondering on it as the big thing had come around. They had photoshopped some pictures and all of this got her with this professor and all type of compromising situations in Canon. And the school is talking about expelling her, talking about uh, expelling the teacher because the teacher was a uh, uh, practicing an alternate lifestyle and they think it's with the, the student and all of this here and, 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 and the other ones talking about uh, getting rid of her, her grades is all uh, uh, carrying on and going on and, but all of a sudden the people that was running this thing, that, that was saying all this, that was doing all of this, one of their parents, the young lady's parents, she was at the house and she was cleaning up and she went through her daughter's stuff and she found some stuff that was said about this girl that her daughter was doing. She found those pictures, how they did that. Who made her mama mad? Now listen, her mama did not like Gwen's mama at all, but her mama hated bullies to the fact because she was bullied all of her school life, all of her life she was bullied until she started fighting and becoming a rowdy individual. She hated bullies and she hated the fact that her daughter had became a bully. Boy, she grabbed them pictures and grabbed them letters and grabbed them pieces of paper and went up to that school, went into that dean's office and showed him all of that stuff. They had called her daughter in there and boy, she read her daughter the riot act, called the rest of them kids in there and read all of them the riot act, had their parents brought up to the school. This mama wanted everybody expelled, kicked out the school and carrying on. Now, by this time, Lunch hour done broke. So Gwen is on her way to get her something out the cafeteria when she sees this woman coming toward her. Now she know that she don't like her mama. So she know that she's probably finna say something nasty to her that she normally do. But she walked straight up to her and told her, she said, I don't understand you. She said, I don't know why you allow my daughter to say these things about you and do these things to you without you coming to tell somebody in this school or coming to tell me. The queen just stood there and looked. She said, but listen, you don't have to worry about them no more. You hear me? You don't have to worry about them no more. And then Psalm 64 verses 1 to 5 clicked in. Because you see, Gwen never did get upset or go to fighting. She just hid in the Lord. Because she knew 
those things would hurt those so those words was hurtful those actions that they were doing behind our back was hurtful all of this was hurtful but it didn't stick to her because she hid in the Lord by the end of the day they had got it all resolved and can on even that professor came up to her and told her, well, you heard the stories and, uh, and everything. Uh, 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 how did you uh, maintain? Uh, 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 how come it didn't bother you? She just smiled at the young lady and she said, because it came to me don't mean it have to stay with me. Because it came to me don't mean it don't have to stay with me. The professor turned to walk away, but before she did, the young lady went inside of her backpack and she went in there and got this track out and gave it to her and told her, listen, because it hit you don't mean it's got to stick to you. And the teacher walked on away. You know, after uh, uh, graduation and all of that stuff, the young lady ended up went back to grad school and everything. And she stayed in touch with that professor. You know, she ministered to that professor over and over and prayed and prayed and prayed. And uh, one day, that professor ended up talking to another young lad at the school. And she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And it dawned on her because it hit me don't mean it had to stick with me. All right. Well, we're so grateful and thankful for that story. Now, listen, let us pull out some of the things that we want you to see in uh, just some of the principles that was in there. First and foremost, she was rooted in the word of God. She didn't wait for the situation or circumstance, even though she had been through a lot, but she always was in the word of God. She was in the God and with the people of God. She even had mentorship from the people of God. So this gave her a steadfast foundation in God. And then when the attack came heavy upon her, she didn't fight back. She went and hid in the Lord. She found a place in the Lord and she hid there in the Lord under the wings of God, which she held on to thirdly and, and most importantly, listen, she let the Lord work through her instead of her trying to work it herself. She let God work it out. Oh, what a powerful thing. That maybe y'all got some other stuff that y'all see in there too. Listen, put that down in the comments, okay? Let us know the principles that you found in the story. Let us know how the story affected your life. As well as we want you to share the story. We want you to give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And listen, maybe if somebody here and the sound of my voice hasn't even started that walk with the Lord, that they, they don't understand what it is to hide themselves in the Lord. Listen, you could start right now today. The Bible said, if thou shalt believe in thy heart on the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Listen, all you got to do is believe and take it by faith. Turn from your ways and turn to the ways of the man Christ Jesus, that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He lived lived on this earth. He died upon that cross for our sins. He shed his sinless precious blood for the washing of and remission of our sins. And uh, they took his body down and put it in a borrowed tomb and three days later he rose again. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making prayers for you and I as the enemy make accusations. If we can believe that and take it by faith, turn from our ways and turn to the ways of the man Christ Jesus, all the Bible says we just have to cry out in confession. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. 
Lord, I know I sinned against you. Lord, I know that I rejected you, Father God. And now, Father, I'm turning unto you. I'm submitting myself unto you. I'm turning from my ways and turning unto your ways. I know that you're the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and you are the risen Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Then get up and darken your Bible. Start reading and studying that Bible. Then I want you to let the Lord lead you to a sin-hating Bible-preaching church. And when you get there, make a public confession of your salvation by the way of baptism. We know that baptism is symbolic to our acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then I want you to continue to walk in the ways of Jesus Christ, all right? And we're so grateful and thankful to you, all right? And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the ARK, A-R-K of O-F, the T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-B-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you will see our symbol, it would go right here. <laughs> Being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. Then we want you to click there and subscribe. And don't forget to share the video with your family and friends. And we want you all to remember that Jesus loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye now.